Hello, I'm Tim Mudise, and welcome to the first series of the Open Dialogue that I'm hosting with the Vert Center for Public Enterprises. These Open Dialogues are a series of engagements hosted by the Vert's Graduate School of Public and Development Management. They are aimed at bringing policymakers together with stakeholders and academics at the institution to jointly probe the challenges facing South Africa today, as well as find solutions to these problems. The first of this series focused on the country's communication needs. It focused on South Africa's need for technology, skills capacity, cost to consumer, access to broadband, as well as the policy framework. The first guest of the Open Dialogue series is the Minister of Communication, Yunus Karim. And the first point that he addressed was the capacity within his department and whether it was capable of implementing policy. What we're basically saying is that, look, yes, yes, the department is very challenged, but no, it is not as challenged as it made out in the public discourse, and we can't blame the officials alone as politicians. Collectively, we haven't given direction. And now it's in the hands, if you like, of Stella and the Benny Abrams and myself. So there is a core, like in most departments, a core that works extremely hard, extremely hard. And I think we've got a good part of that core. The others tag along, like in most departments. I think we've got the minimum, but it's complemented by further skills. We asked the National Treasury to give us a CFO, acting CFO for the next six, eight weeks. We're advertising this coming, uh, is it this Sunday or next Sunday, for three DDD jobs and the CFO. Human resources, only this morning I spoke to Minister Lindy Wissusulu. She's seconding somebody to us. I'll be writing to her this evening, uh, uh, asking for uh, uh, secondment. Then we brought in advisors, uh, uh, two advisors to the minister, and now we are trying to set up a forum of independent experts come uh, 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 academics, meaning one people not linked to industry preferably, whose only interest is in broadband, digital migration, and so on. So we're setting up a team, about eight to ten people, maybe six to eight, who meet once a month to advise the minister and deputy minister. So whatever weaknesses we have in the department, we're going to make up for it, A, by bringing in the skills, B, engaging more with experts like you, C, setting up an advisory forum, and D, asking that you please engage with us. Minister Karim addressed the broadband costs in South Africa and compared them to other mid-level countries. We've gone to Ikasa and said, okay, the gliding path is fine, blah, 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 but still, the costs have been reduced of telephony, telecommunications, mobile operators and so on, but you know what, it hasn't gone far enough. Only yesterday, I, uh, the night before at least, I was looking at notes on the digital, uh, bro it's a broadband commission, UN1, on digital migration, right? It says that in, in Sri Lanka, they pay three US dollars for mobile uh, 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 broadband. Uh, and really, that's astonishing. Uh, why can't we do it? We're also a middle level, middle income uh, uh, development country for three gigabytes by the early 2012 figure. During the deliberations, various stakeholders addressed broadband issues. Nathan, thank you very much, Manila uh, Gomez. Uh, yes, from the big side. Now, I just wanted to talk more on the broadband issue because the draft paper I think had some uh, time frames. The last time frame was end of June, uh, July. I see the new time frames here. Just the issues that uh, are really impeding uh, this process of, of, of rolling out the plan and the strategy. And, and how SIP 15 wants to uh, actually deal with this particular issue. That's a fair question to ask, except that uh, when I got to the department, I asked them, what happened? So I don't think it's ethical for me to repeat what's here, because the person that they are, uh, pointed fingers to is not here to speak for himself or herself. Essentially, it's to do with the fact that the department, let's put it this way, the ministry, was uh, challenged. Uh, so um, deadlines could not be met. Now, we've gone to parliament and said, hold us to account. This is the deadline you hold the current minister and deputy minister to account for. You've got my cell number. It's the same as May 1995. You can reach me. Tim, that doesn't help me, right? Because you get people from Umsunduzi, Maritzburg, SMSing me, 8.40 p.m. on a Saturday, to say, Yunus, you've been there five weeks now, watching a Hollywood movie, Hollywood movie, not a South African movie even, Hollywood movie, and they say at 8.40 p.m. on a Saturday, 
You know, you've been there five weeks now. What nonsense is there on? On TV, right? And I switched the thing on. I was reading a novel. I switched the thing on, and I see it's a Hollywood movie. So they're holding me to account in Peter Maritzburg, right? Somebody very close to me sends me a thing about, in the interests of openness and transparency, and in brackets, of course, you like that term, though how many of you really believe it? I want to let you know, as close as I am to you, I am not paying my TV license. Why? Because Sunday night, this was the two Sunday nights ago, she didn't like what she saw on SABC. Again, a movie. Okay? So anybody can reach me. My cell phone number is, I think, known to the peasants in Mongolia. So that's not a problem. So Mandla, by the way, well, let's be open and transparent, as somebody says, I love to say and don't really mean. As we walked in here, you reminded me that I met an official from your department, and we said we'll meet him next week to chime in with what you want to do. The reasons we haven't delivered is complex. A, the department is challenged and needs skills, and I've been around about where you said that. B, the politicians were challenged, and I'm challenged in a different way too. Uh, uh, we, we refer to the good work you're doing. Okay? And I said to them, hey, can you check these figures out? Uh, uh, the Gauteng government, we said, has already embarked on one such project of e e education. Gauteng's 2,200 public schools will have access to uncapped Wi-Fi and 3G connectivity and 88,000 Hawaii, I say, tablets from next year as part of the province's e-learning solution. I asked the guy that gave me speaking notes. You know, the three of them gave me speaking notes and I string it together. Often the figures don't, this is the government for you, this is a public service 19 years later. Each of them will give you different figures. They're all in the same department, right? All in the same department, they give you the different figures. Then you have to Google like, early out of the morning, and then you get fed up and start you know, ringing independent experts, say, hey, you want to be part of the uh, pool? Please be available at two in the morning, okay? Don't cry. You, you completely cry. You say, government excludes you, you know, we're not moving fast enough, here we are. Well, if you're here, be here. Right? So you're available. Any, I won't disturb you unduly in your family life and so on. But hey, if I come and got the facts and figures and three department officials are giving me three different figures, you're the expert, give it to us. So in short, just let, you know, let yourself know what you're letting yourself in for if you want to work with us over the next eight months. The Minister of Communications, Yunus Karim, also spoke about the mooted ICT forum. From what I can tell at this stage, Tim, remember now, I'm being clear, at this stage, we are seeking to see, seeking to see, that this policy forum actually oversees, if you like, the implementation of the green and white papers over the next few years in policy and legislation. So that's how I understand its aim to be. The second aim is to make government as a whole aware of the importance of the ICT uh, industry to economic growth, development, and job creation. You can tell I'm finding my answers as I'm uh, uh, wading through my thoughts, which I didn't know I had until now, which helps me. Thirdly, I would think, I would think, I'm conferring with the others, right? It would be linked to the NDP, which has got uh, uh, quite a bit on the ICT. Fourthly, if possible by then, we would like to report back on aspects of the work we've done. On broadband, we'll have done some work at least. Uh, we might be able to give an interim report on spectrum. We will be able to possibly give an interim report or even maybe a final report if all goes well on where digital migration is going. So it's to also, for fourth reason would be to inform the industry and the other stakeholders, unions and civil society, this is where we are. And, and can you help us to get faster to where we all want to be? So those are the things. But you might tell me, hey, yeah, there were similar aims before. Then help us to, to, to make it more productive. Maybe we should have firmer guidelines and, 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 and timelines and whatever, uh, and deadlines. Uh, you can help in shaping that. So that when we exit by April, May next year, we've got something, re uh, something firm there for uh, you now. You can even maybe come up with, as we get closer to the time, possible names of people who could serve on this thing to make it more effective.